and they would like they turn a pale color yeah. from being inside all day and they're, they're just just gross. like us yeah basically we haven't tested this at all but welcome to games we never played oh are we recording yeah why not hi i'm ed we this is Joe. We've never played Super Mario 64. Never. This we, is games we've never played. We don't know where any of the 120 powers... I mean, we don't know what, what's in the game. This is a filler episode of Game Soup. Welcome to Game Soup. If my you're watching this... My name's Joe. We already said our names, but we got to fill time, so my name is Ed. <laughs> and my name is JJ. <laughs> and I'm Jeff. And I'm JJ. If you've seen this episode... Well, I don't know how you could have already seen it, but if you're watching it now... That means what, Joe? We, we, we ran out. We ran out of episodes. Something, okay. we, needed, we needed to record some of these real short backup episodes. So, what are the possible reasons? A, one of us is dead. B, we're both dead. Or C, we just ran out of time. That's probably the most likely scenario. But you should probably alert the authorities. It's one of those triple jumps I've heard so much about. Have you really heard a lot about them? Why? Would I, I don't know. This is the first time I've experienced this game. Wow, you're really... Yeah, I know. You really understand the mechanics of the movement in this game. I sure do. Do you remember the first time you played this and you spent 20 minutes out here just long jumping around and everything? I've never played before. I've never played this oh, one before. Oh, that's right, me either. I don't know what I was thinking. We're talking about sleeping schedules. Oh, yeah. And how in the olden days, or, or how it's recommended that you sleep. I've read this before, that it's recommended that you sleep at night for, whatever, four or five hours, and then during the day take a nap. Like, most people just sleep at night for six to eight hours, usually, and then don't sleep during the day. That's for children, right? Right. Taking a nap, that's for children. But it feels so good. You can't deny it. But you were talking about another kind of a sleep schedule. The one I was talking about was like, a, you sleep at night, as usual, but for less time, and then during the day you take a nap. Well, you were saying something else. What, right. what was that about? I heard that, like, a, as far back as the, I don't know, 1700s or 1800s, it was normal for people to sleep for, like, four hours, at, you know, go to go to sleep at regular time, and then wake up for an hour or two in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 a bunch of creeps right there. Yeah, and then and then go back to bed for another four hours after that. They I, wake up at four a.m. by candlelight and celebrate the witching hour every night. Seventeen <laughs> hundreds and eighteen hundreds. They were they are uh, they're I mean, scary enough. Yeah. What was so important? They, they were living in, their in lives. the Cthulhu times. The Cthulhu. T oh crap! Oh crap! Oh crap! Oh, I, I have no idea how to get this power star. I'm just guessing that this is the solution. How could I possibly know? I've never played the game. Yeah, that that chain chomp is scarier than the shark that it, or the eel that appears no, later in this game. No, not no. It has e the same kind of face. Yeah, just imagine an eel with a face like that. I mean, I've never seen it before. But <laughs> just imagine some really soothing music, but a giant eel. It's really terrifying. I'm still one of the most out. one of the most terrifying enemies in a game ever. So the witching hour happens in in the 17 and 1800s. That's uh, 4 a.m. for those of you that don't know. And what? it's also a belt from Diablo 3. It is. But what did they? What is it? What do they do? What the hell were they doing? Getting up in the middle of the night? That doesn't make any sense. I'm not. Are you sure that's a thing? That's what I heard. Well, you've read more things than me. You've even read the book Ready Player One. I did. <laughs> I've read the ending of it. Yeah. Well, you heard the ending. I of heard it. the ending. Yeah. Yeah, In I actually read the book. Um, but it's 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 a cultural phenomenon, as they say. Yeah. I found it. I found it wanting or lacking, whichever is the correct term. I, I don't know. I found the ending to be lame. I didn't. Li I didn't listen to the whole book though. I've I heard like bits and pieces of it. I actually I sped read through it over about. Two days. It's a really easy read. Like, if you've read the Hunger Games, which I know you haven't, Joe, because you 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 burn. No, I don't all really. Books. I don't really read. You I'll... burn any books within a twenty mile radius of you, right? Well, if I'm cold, yeah, I need. And also, if I'm trying to, you know, summon some. How, how did you know that was gonna oh, happen? Oh, I just I was gonna take a rest because I was running from those boulders. If it's the witching hour and I've run out of candles to burn, sometimes I just burn uh, books. That's the way to do it. But uh, anyway, if, uh, it, it's it's written uh, at about the same level of The Hunger Games, which is, I believe, intended to be a young adult novel, right? I guess so. But I saw the movie. I don't, I don't think I saw the last Hunger Games movie, though. I think I only saw the first two. And the movie, yeah, me neither, actually. I've only seen the first two. The movie was awesome, though, at least the first one. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Get out of my head, Charles! Kind of a disturbing story. I guess. Wait, how do you get him to not... I forget. I mean, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. How do you get him to stop uh, tracking you like this? Maybe you gotta do a super jump over his dumb head. Oh, oh no. He's gonna throw you off the side of the mountain. So oh, long. Here it goes. So long, B word. The B stands for bomb. bomb. Yeah, they, you always seem to know what the B's, <laughs> B's are. Oh, now he's, he's reset. I wonder... I, I kind of forget. 
There we go. You mean you can throw him off the edge of there? Nah. Oh yeah, he's just damaged. You just throw him anywhere. I always like to carry him like all the way down to the hill. You can carry him all the way to the bottom pretty much. Well, we don't have that kind of time. No, we sure don't. We're not eight-year-olds anymore. Wow. You, uh, wow. Get out of my head. Anyway, what were we talking about? The witching hour and such? Yeah. And nothing better. Nothing better than the witching hour. Oh. Welcome to Fat Man. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> whoa. 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 <laughs> whoa. Holy, Holy shit. Calm down, that's not something to be proud of. Okay, cool. Well, before we get into this one, I just want to apologize for the ad that probably is going to appear at the beginning of this because we played Super Mario 64, and Nintendo's probably going to monetize this video and take all the profits. Yeah. We're probably just going to let them do it because I don't want to cut out the footage of us playing that wonderful, wonderful title. Look at the... what? Mondu the f Fat Lord of the Fight Places. Remember, only in victory will you gain the key to the soul of each fighter prepared to fight. No, this, is this like a fan game or is this like a, an unofficial game? I don't know because it said J Japanese release, but this is in English. Yeah, it's in English. I mean, to the best of my knowledge, this is in English, right? I, d I don't know if that's actually English or oh, not. Oh boy. Oh Jesus. <laughs> I'm breathing fire. He kind of looks like, uh... This Ch guy's a spike over Doesn't he kind of remind you of another famous wrestler? Yeah, uh, Chavez. Chavez, yeah. We have, we've recorded a very special episode of Game Soup. We recorded it back in December. Has and it really been that long? Yeah, it was in December. December 15th, 2015, I believe. A day that will remain in infamy. And this is, this was an episode that we recorded as a backup episode. Similar to this one. But this was about a game called Chavez for Super Nintendo. And this game... Oh my god. Well, don't, don't play it. Just wait for us to play it. Wait, wait for us to post the episode, but it's going to be a filler episode, and it's coming up. But, Chavez. But we're going to hype it up. What a terrible match. So you know how, for a long time, Square Enix was like, we're not going to make Final Fantasy VII until we're about to go bankrupt. And this is going to be the, the ace, the ace in our hat. The, 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 the what's that, what's that term? The ace in our, the ace in the hole. I think Chavez is going to be our ace in the hole for that day when... We lose all of our subscribers, and we're both arrested, and we just need one last out. It's going to be our Chavez video. So get ready for that, because we don't know when it's coming, but it's coming. This is Risky Woods. This actually looks kind of cool. I used to see this at the video store, and I never rented it. I remember seeing it, though, and it's it's kind of it's like a monster type of game, so you would think I would have played this one before, yeah. but I actually have never played this before, unlike some of the previous games, one of the previous games that we played on this episode called Super Mario 64. Sorry about the ad, guys. Yeah, really, really sorry. I mean, not so sorry that we're not going to show I it. I keep falling. But... I'm falling asleep. Yeah. Kind of weird. You're also invulnerable. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on here. There's a chant button as well. There's a chant button? Yeah. One of the buttons, I looked in the option menu, and it, oh. said, it said, shoot, jump, and chant. It looks like we have infinite knives. Cool. That's that's actually a really cool design on that that tree back there. That's almost like ahead of its time as far as design goes. Is it? Why? Because it rem resembles like a computer circuit. Or no, it's just, just just like an it's just an interesting style. That's like a postmodern tree or something yeah, like that. Kinda, oh, you, you died. This kind of reminds me of ghouls and ghosts and I'm goblins. Staring at yeah, it does actually. It's in in difficulty and frustration level as well. And also sprite size. Well, no, no, no. This one's definitely bigger. Yeah, this definitely has some pretty big sprites. They're very detailed. They are very detailed. Is that a mimic? And no. they're more well drawn than a game we've played before called Rastan. Rastan! For graphics. To Rastan 2. For to oh yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> well designed, guys. Good game design. Hello, welcome to another episode of Good Game Design. Wow. That was very close. So the boulder doesn't actually hurt you. No, See, it's the falling off. How could they have done that better? They could have put a platform under the logs so that you see that it falls and then you, you would fall down and be saved by it. So you would understand when you step on logs that you get killed. So you would fall on it and then you would fall down onto a platform below and then they could start using it in a dangerous way. Yeah. That would be a much much nicer way to, to introduce that type of uh, concept to the player. It's not the first time, guys. So snakes? Snakes. Oh yeah! So. Actually, we should also do comments of the week now that we're here. No, oh, we cool. shouldn't, because this is going to be a filler. No, no, this is gonna, it's going to go up. Okay. We're going to put this one up. All right, so we're going to do comments of the week, and also that, that'll tie in nicely to our snake story. So let me just pull up that list real quick. I'm going to pause the game one sec. Okay. So let's start with our comments here. We got one from Mitch, who, sa <laughs> who says, in reference to, I think it's Momodor episode four, we, we, we linked to a cat what song. What the fuck just happened? And he says, I want to kill myself after that cat song. And if you haven't heard the cat song yet, look up I'm a Cat, Check Me Out. 
come maybe, on YouTube yeah. or don't. Maybe you, I'll. You might want to kill yourself, so probably don't want to do that. Yeah, it, it might. It might lead to that. You don't want to. You don't want that to happen. But it is worth checking out at least once, as long as you're not gonna kill yourself. So that was Mitch. Thanks, Mitch. And I kind of agree with you. If you're on depression medication, you probably don't want to be watching this one. Maybe not. It might make you want to end it. End it all. Our next comment is from Lucas, and he says. He said, in reference... Actually, no, we're going to come back to that one. Our next comment is from Willy Goat. And he says... Okay, this keeps on sending me back huh. in time. Maybe I have to get this item? Time out. <laughs> the fuck? Time the out. What is going on? Willy Goat said... Do you want to play a different game? No, I want to see what happens All here. Right. I want to see if I can get past that thing. He said, have an easy platforming segment, throw in some Medusa heads, and now it's a hard platforming segment. Which is so on the nose that Konami actually sued him. <laughs> and the the lawsuit is currently pending. I am being called as a character witness in that lawsuit. So we'll see how that goes. So thanks, Willie. I don't understand this concept here. Maybe I'm just not paying enough attention. I don't know. So what was the last uh, yeah, comment here? Let's come back to our, our, our comment here from Lucas, who said, I believe it was in reference to Momodora episode four again, or maybe it was three. He said, I only watched this episode for the snake story. How could you do this to me? I'm really sorry, Lucas. We we kind of, I don't know. We just didn't get around to it. it. It happens. Anyway, so let's tell the snake story. Yeah, we will. We will. So I really teased it up a lot. Here we go with the snake story. You might recall last time we talked about the spider story, which I believe, again, was in Mom Momodora episode three or four, about the giant spider in my house. So this story occurred not too long after that, it was springtime, maybe April or May. It was beautiful weather. And it was raining really hard, as Japan tends to do a lot in, in that season. So I went to bed that night, and in my bedroom there was a sliding door, which goes to directly outside. So you know, you have the sliding door and the screen door that's right next to it. And I opened the sliding door and left the screen door closed to get some air. It was raining, it was pouring rain from the second I went to bed till the second I woke up. And I woke up. It was, I'm guessing, like 6 in the morning. And I go to stand up and I go take my shower, right? Which is in the bathroom right next to the bedroom. So cool. I get out of the shower. I go back into my bedroom. And there's like a... It was really... It was like a, like a big cord that I had left on the floor, which I didn't remember leaving there. Like a, like a cord to like a vacuum cleaner or something. It turns out it wasn't a cord. It was the bottom half of a snake. So what happened was that this snake, in order to get out of the rain, had climbed the foot up, somehow climbed the, the, the foot gap up to the sliding door. He had wedged himself between between the two sliding doors. So now they were right next to each other because one of them had been slid open. So he was wedged between them and the, 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 the lower half of his body was sticking out and it was in my bedroom. And this was a very long snake. He was at least, at least three feet, I want to say. Which is really long for a snake, I think. So he was in my room when I was sleeping. He came in to get out of the rain. There was a snake and I had to leave for work, like, like right then. I had about two minutes to, to solve this snake problem. So what do you do if there's a snake in your, in your bedroom? What would you do, Joe? Uh, put it in a box. I guess. I didn't really know what to do, because I lived alone, and it was a snake. So I did what <laughs> I did what any sane person would do. I tried to finagle the doors to crush the snake between them. <laughs> 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 because I wanted to keep him trapped until I could come back from work and figure out what to do. I didn't want him to get into the house. So, so I started closing the doors. And he started to like get crushed a little bit. Not to death, but just a little bit to show him who's boss. But it wasn't working. He was still in my house. And I had to leave for work. I was already late for work at that point. And eventually, that bell, man. I'm not really sure what's going on with this title. I don't know. Eventually, I went and grabbed that broom, that same broom from the spider story. And I very slowly whisked him, whisked him away out into the rain. It was still raining. I whisked him out 
butt end first because I was afraid he was gonna like bite me or something, you know? And that was the snake story. 